Greetings, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm turning on my video here, bringing us into this moment. Welcome to, this is our final chat. This is our final chat of our NBT at Home Founders Month series. I'm joined by Nia Farrell. I'm joined by Jonathan McCrory and Sade Lithcott, revealing themselves now. <laughs> uh, and I'm this is this is a special this is a special chat because I'm gonna get to finally share space with the people who have been such a support in making this thing happen. Um, and so the, the the brain trust, it's always tricky for me to figure out like which way should I face for various things. But the brain trust of of who's on this this call tonight is like um, something that I've been looking forward to all week. So, um, I mean, I don't really know how to give introduction to all that you all are, but I'm going to try and I'm gonna try and do it succinctly. Uh, <laughs> Nia Farrell, who is our social media engagement expert extraordinaire curator of the digital presence of the National Black Theater. So, so, so glad to be in, in space with you. And, and we're in space every week, all week. <laughs> You know, this is like constantly going. So, so glad to have you. So glad to have you here. <laughs> uh, Shade Lithcott, our CEO, someone who has been, I don't know if you've been watching her stories, but she's been in action on the streets, telling people, bringing the message of NBT. I mean, like whoop, right into 2020. So uh, welcome. So, I mean, we are also always in conversation. It's so good to see you though uh, at, this, at this particular moment. And then we have Jonathan McCrory, who is our artistic director, someone who has been just, just the chef in the kitchen, bringing all these pieces together, always being like the, the just the fabric that, that ties it all together. So welcome, welcome, welcome and congratulations because MBT just won an Obie? Yes. <laughs> we just won an Obie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like every day, just more, more and more impressed with MBT. I'm like, what, what? Every day, every day, topping ourselves. Uh, all right, so we're gonna get this thing started. And this is the download, which is, you know, we'll get into a lot more about what exactly that means, what that means for us. Um, but quickly, we're going to do our check-in. Accessibility, accessibility needs. How are you feeling? Um, what do you need from the space? What are you bringing into the space? Um, how was your day? Have you been hydrating, sleeping well? All these things, let us know. Uh, and then the second, second check-in question is, what was one intention you had with creating or being a part of this series? this NBT at home series. Uh, I'm gonna throw that out to the group and whoever wants to start can start. Uh, and I will be answering this week as well because you know, that's what we're here to do. Um, I can go first, I I'll, I'll, I'll kick us off. So um, uh, A, um, my accessibility needs. Um, I feel really, I, I feel hydrated. I do have water, so I'm ready for us to like actually work some muscles, uh, spiritual muscles, mental muscles, physical muscles. I'm ready to work them out. Um, I, I, I feel, I, and I feel really excited. Actually, completion feels really good to me, <laughs> and the opportunity to find completion in this series, this right moment, is a, it is a lead in to like the reason why. Um, I wanted to um, invest in um, not only just MBT, but in this moment of, of illuminating our founder um, and having a, such a dynamic team. I mean, you're seeing four people, but there is a team, a staff at National Black Theater who have come together to really rally and to bring up this, this, this moment um, of our founder, of the legacy of 52 years of committed work. So for me, I wanted to do this. The reason why I said yes to, uh, to wanting to do this is because um, service uh, is how we heal. I'm creating a space of service, creating a space for us to lend um, knowledge that we have to hopefully heal, to hopefully 
um, create love, to hopefully um, extend uh, olive tree branch to our community, to actually um, exemplify and illuminate and amplify um, those through the vision of Dr. Barbara Antier. So um, it has been actually really humbling and also totally radically contemporary to me. <laughs> Oh, do I pass on to another person? All right, who else wants to go next? I'll go. There we go. Yes, I am feeling so light and so energized and like absolutely joyful. I'm really glad you said, what are you bringing in? Because I have chicken soup for the preteen soul here with me. And it's something that we were just like talking about before, but I'm like, it's actually made me really happy to just like have this to laugh about it. Um, I don't know if this counts as an endorsement, but it might it might be now just fell um and the reason the intention that i came in with for like nbt at home founders month was to like really put the national and national black theater um with our like digital platforms to like really extend our affirmations our knowledge our wisdom our power our belief in soul really mm -hmm. beyond new york city beyond harlem um and to reach more people with every week and with every conversation Uh, yes, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in on that. Um, accessibility needs, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, feeling a little dry. So kind of the air is kind of dry where I am. So very much needing to hydrate even more. So if you see me doing a lot of that off camera, that's what I'm doing. Um, and so what really drew me to this particular series was, I was like, Dr. Tier is somebody who's really dynamic. And I actually learned so much more about MBT and just the, the, the time period and, and was able to make so many connections um, that I, for some reason, had not seen before. And, you know, and, I, and I've celebrate, celebrated past Founders Month. So um, this, this one in particular, she really spoke to me, you know what I mean? And really was... Um, so a touchstone in a really a really difficult moment um and so i was so grateful to be able to just dive into her experience and 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 use her her work as a as a path um and was hopeful that what i was finding from her her archival images and and, and interviews and writings hoping that that would be of use to to someone else so that's um that's what really like sparked me. Cool. Um, welcome, family. <laughs> I love, like, my mom, Dr. Tears, she would welcome everybody into their home away from home, which is National Black Theater. But y'all are literally in all of our homes, so welcome to our homes. Um, my accessibility check-in um, for those who need it. I am a. I would say a medium tone African-American woman, hair back, uh, a fuchsia lip. I have a Yoruba piece of artwork in the background um, and a door to the right of me and a curtain to the left. Um, I have my hair back, like I said, and I'm wearing hoops. Um, in terms of my own accessibility needs, I, um, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about being a creative and an artist is that you approach things from um, sometimes different vantage points. So my accessibility needs is that I have, um, I have to focus on what I'm trying to say because um, with the learning disabilities I have, it's really hard to track different things happening at the same time. So I've committed to just answering the question and not trying to do other CEO things while our conversation is happening so I can be present. Um, and my intention for this series, um, you know, is intersectional and it is slightly complicated. I approached this series, um, one, as a daughter of, um, a daughter of Dr. Tier and um, really living a commitment to amplifying the work that she created, that she continued, that she built um, with the understanding, the intimate understanding of how much of a visionary she was and wanting to have her life not be in vain. Also 
not only not in vain, but of service, which was something that was completely a part of my mother's DNA fabric. How do we serve, right? Looking at art from a space of service and medicine as a connected tissue to our ancestral wisdom. And so when we were designing what Founders Month could be. Um, from my own intention, I wanted it to be all of the things that were really the fundamental foundations of Dr. Tears, love and teachings. Um, the other thing that I think was important in terms of intention, um, everything that National Black Theater does, um, we really approach it from an intuitive space. My mother always said we were intuitive, God conscious artists. And so looking at redefining what success looks like. So part of our intentions were to set real clear benchmarks of what success feels like to NBT. Um, a part of that was creating a fund um, because we knew that in order to continue the work that we do, especially in the atmosphere that we're living in these unprecedented times, that a real need was for you know, financial security so that we could keep staff, so that we could keep programming, so that we, you know, in the 52 years that we've been on this earth, we've never closed, that we could, that we ensure that we never close. So a part of it was, what does that financial model look like when we um, define for ourselves what success and autonomy and financial independence looks like? So we started the NBT Vision Fund. The other benchmark for success is now during COVID where we can't physically gather and audiences look very different because they're not under our very intimate roof. Like how do we redefine audience from a global standpoint to Nia's point? And how do we redefine gathering? And so what we knew we wanted to do as a benchmark for success in terms of intention was create the intimacy of the community that we steward in Harlem here in your homes all over the world. And that has been some of the most remarkable um, parts of this for me. And I go, lastly, my intention was really to put a shiny face on all of the amazing team that we have at MBT and our community of artists, our community of makers, um, so that you could get to know us more than just our productions, but really the pedagogy of what makes every decision happen at National Black Theater, which is housed in all of these uh, talks leading up to this download. So that's my check-in. So well, this is like, it's really a special, a special conversation because we get to reflect on all the things that have, have happened and yet figuring out how to move forward. Someone who, I think, I, I believe it was Ebony at the beginning of the series mentioned visioning a mother plan. Um, and that's a phrase that I've been thinking a lot about. Like, yeah, it's, it, it's always, these conversations are so like, rich and yummy to me because they're always providing some type of roadmap. So um, just to get us started in this, like just throwing this out here, the, the letter that was released at the beginning of Founders Month. So when we were announcing um, that we were coming out with this series, it was, we talked about this in, in phone calls that, that it was a letter that was working on so many different levels. It was like, a, um, and Shade, maybe you can speak more to this, but like it was a press release, but then also a statement of NBT's position um, during this time. And it was unlike anything I'd ever, I'd ever read as like a statement from an organization. I was like, this is so badass. And like, particularly at a time when theaters were doing like, you know, we stand in solidarity and, you know, tra la la. And then, you know, here was MBT making this like bold statement. So I just want to start with, you know, what, 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 what was the impetus? What, what, what were you and Jonathan like in your midnight, like, meetings you know what what were you brainstorming meetings. we do have a lot of those <laughs> um, so uh inspiration for founders month one of the lead inspirations was this letter to the future that dr tier wrote in 1991 for crossroads theater as they were exiting um uh their space and uh 
uh, beginning a new renovation. So the letter is 30 years old. And it didn't resurface until a couple of years ago when Crossroads got in touch with us and said, we found this piece of archive that your mom wrote. Um, and I think what was so incredible about finding that piece of paper um, was that what was encoded on it really was the secret sauce to how NBT is different um, from traditional theaters. Um, it put into crystal clear focus what our values, our care, our guiding principles are. And that really is around our community's well being and using all of these wonderful tools that are the performing arts to constantly reaffirm, reimagine, reconnect, you know, re uh, engage this soul vibration of love and healing and centering like this God conscious energy of spirit mm -hmm. that permeates everything we do. You know, the thing about MBT, we've been getting a lot of congratulations lately because we won this award or that award. And it might sound like we're bragging, but for Jonathan and I and Amasola and Nabi, you know, for us, it's just a larger platform to heal more of our folks. And my mom's whole thing was, how do we decrud the oppressive stories that we have in all of us? And that if we could do that self spiritual surgery within mm -hmm. ourselves, we ourselves are instruments of healing. And that isn't just incredible to watch in the arena of performance, that vibration spills out into the street. It spills out into the DNA of our audience and that we subversively are, you know, are the living embodiment of not only black lives mattering, but that our liberation matters and that it's ours to craft and it's our story to tell. And we'll tell it, um, uh, we'll tell it at, in the way that we see ourselves and the way we love ourselves. And I think for us, it's just been amazing for people to come into a relationship with us in a more global way and to understand that like we see ourselves as stewards of our ancestral wisdom and grace and we find inventive and innovative ways to share that with the world. Um, and then lastly, I would just say my mother thought that theater was like the most incredible ruse. Like we could mm -hmm. use theater and I think Ebony touched on that and the playwrights mm -hmm. that have come through our residencies have touched on that, that this is just a framework by which we invite folks in because it feels familiar, theater feels familiar. Um, but what we're actually doing is working on all of our souls and spirits because we got a lot oh. of work to do. And so, yeah, that's kind of um, where the letter of the future really embodied. And we knew that that was an invitation for each of us to curate some conversations around what does the future look like with that Black people thriving in the future, being free in the future, you know, writing these love letters, these letters to the future around our own spirit and liberation. And so we thought, why, like, instead of a day, let's do a month and let's, you know, so yeah. Anybody else want well, to talk? I mean, well, I think I, I think I think the I think the conversation around the letter around the letter to the future around this press release that was that that was that that was done was really was like there were so many things happening in our community where we were right. we, where we were not defining our table, um, we were not defining the space in which we wanted to occupy. And so, if we could do if MBT has done nothing has has led with autonomy. And led with and led with crafting what does it mean to craft one's own destiny versus being the tool of someone else's destiny and what does it mean to really sit with the uncomfortable second co the coda to what mlk said was that i is inter if i'm leading us into a burning building by trying to get us into integration right um and the idea this idea of what does it mean to create for us and by us by a real stance um, what does it mean to create a space that calls people in instead of calling people out? Um, what does it mean to create all of these mechanisms that really awaken um, 
uh, a sense of allowing for us to live in our human self while still being authentically us by living in our melanin skin, living in our indigenous practice, living in mm -hmm. our and uh, living in our oneness. So how do we actually get free? How do we, as Nia has on her shirt, get powered by our ancestors? How do <laughs> both of those mechanisms work as as, a, as an elastic pull um, to mm -hmm. actually allow for us to to really have a conversation, to really talk to one another, and we have. Um, we have a brilliant visionary entrepreneurial genius to have a foundation, a fundamental conversation with, right? Dr. Tier. There, 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 there is there is magic found in that letter to the future. There's mm -hmm. magic found in what L Lavender Freddie did in that commissioned work. There's magic found when we bring her liberators back together with people that they trained. And then there's magic found when we bring the people who are the new consider could be the new crop of liberators, right? There's magic found when we bring um, artists who are in our sphere and circle who have been fed by the baptismal water of MBT yet work in spheres outside of it. And then there's magic found in uplifting the leadership that holds the glue together. And the inside of doing all of that, we awaken the complex identity of a woman, of a black woman who came to Harlem to start something revolutionary, to start something that, that, that was ahead of her time, to start something that allowed for me to have a birthright, right? When I think about National Black Theater, when I think about a seat at the table, I think about how are we generating birthrights? How are we generating spaces to allow for the next generation as, as I, I quote this so many times, I love James Baldwin because he's the great witnesser. He asks us to witness in order to create for future generations. So, so I, think, I think that that is another element that comes when we think about the curation and when we think about what uh, Founders Month has been um, and why it, it, it awakened, uh, like looking at what we did with MBT at home, uh, this opportunity for us to, to actually not just think about one day, but think about what does it mean to create a whole series uh, that, that, that actually gives um, her the opportunity and the theater the opportunity to live in our complexity instead of our simplicity. Because I think okay. we as black people don't get that as often, right? I mean, I mean Chelsea and Nia, tell, I mean, do you, I, I feel like so many times are asked to be simple. So many times are asked to, to, to live in simplicity when our grief is complex, our joy is complex, our beingness is complex. Oh, wait. Oh, I was gonna say, I wanna hear what y'all have to say, but also it's, I think that there is beauty and simplicity. I think the challenge is that we are intersectional beings and mm -hmm. the box is the problem, right? Like, I, I, I Sometimes I think like we talk about like our morning meditations that like they rest and they depend on silence and that silence, things are birthed in that. And so I think there's, I don't know, I think that there's a real beauty to simplicity, but not devoid of complexity, but, and not devoid of intersectionality. Um, yeah, what do y'all have on that? You're mm -hmm. muted, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, fam. Um, I love what Chelsea brought up in terms of like, we were getting a lot of letters from other theaters that just felt like lip service. And the critical thing about Dr. Tears' letter to the future and our A Seat at the Table press release was that it was like truly a call to action and a challenge. I love the fact that in the letter of the in the letter to the future, Dr. T was like, at this point, I expect this to have happened. And you have to reflect and be like, that hasn't happened yet. What can we do to get there? And um, a seat at the table. We're like, we expect the following things to happen. We will continue to build our own table. We will build more seats there to like bring people into this communion that we're hosting. Um, and I just think like the the call to action is like very critical to what we to what we offer. Yeah, and I just want to plug that we're currently devising and will be releasing a Letters to the Future campaign that invites everyone with the link to contribute something um, to, I mean, a digital time capsule, a, um, I don't know, a binary coded patchwork quilt. <laughs> um, and keep on going, Afro keep on going. With the yes, 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 keep on going. Future ancestral roadmap. I mean, I, it, there will be a Google link. And when that Google link <laughs> uh, 
uh, is is introduced to you, please participate. Please share something that you would like to go into the future, um, because that's that's something that we we have demands that we should be making for the future as well. Um, did anybody else want to speak to? Yeah, speak to and that? We should, yeah, we should be co-creating it together, mm -hmm, right? That's mm -hmm. another thing is that so we we live in a, a binary space where people dictate to us what our culture is, what our history is, what mm -hmm. how we will be remembered. We have we have rested, I think, too long on mm. hashtags of remembrance when we know coursing through our DNA, our rituals around remembering, our alchemy mm -hmm. around how we exist and how we honor and how we and how we hold space for one another. And it can't be as simple or binary as hashtags and our mm -hmm. lives just mattering. We are more than that. Our ancestors ho are holding more space than that. And so I think mm -hmm. that, you know, that is one of the calls to action is to like push us past performative action, performative mm -hmm. activism. Mm -hmm. It is to push us past the understanding that the lens in which we view the world is not the only lens that exists, right? So much of raging against the machine is centering the machine of whiteness. So we can rage against it, but we're still centering it. We understand that we don't need to pull up a seat to a table that was never constructed for our brilliance. We have to build our own table and invite people to that because that code of honor, that code of grace and that code of arms mm -hmm. is built from our righteousness. It is built and been paid for by the same ancestors that bought and paid for our crown. Mm -hmm. And that we want to invite people to a paradigm shift that when we set the table, the rules are different. We can use the same language, but what it means is fundamentally different. And when it's fundamentally different, the result is fundamentally different. So that in 1968, when this great experiment called NVT was created, and in 2020, as people are raging against the machine and screaming and begging for our lives to matter, we're saying quiet, soft, through our chant and our sonic vibrations, we will keep building something new while folks do the frontline work of dismantling something old. And at some point we will come back together, right? And look at how we have co-created a future where black people not only live, but thrive and are free, truly free. I mean, and that's, and that's really kind of the beautiful part about this word co-creation and what's the beautiful part about the, when you bring up this letter to the future, Chelsea, right? Co-creation, letter to the future, this quilt idea. Like, I really love this idea of you bringing up quilt because how does it live in our indigenous practice, right? And this idea of co-creating and this idea of quilting, um, quilting as sending a message, sending, sending a DNA code, this idea of sending this way to freedom, the North Star. And if anything, maybe these letters to the future can generate a North Star, generate a, a, a guidepost to what does liberation look like now? Where does liberation need to go now? How do we challenge the notion where... What, what, new, what new things need to be captured um, so that we can honor this radically uh, challenging, um, radically awakening, um, radically different moment? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bun abundance out there and we're all attached to it in some form of way. But there's also a lot of grief, um, present, very present. Um, and I think that's why these Thursdays for me have been like a salve. Um, you go through a week and it feels like a year go through a week and you're wondering like, what am I doing? How am I doing? How am I breathing? How am I being able to connect? Why am I even doing this job, right? You ask these questions. I'm in a digital box. I asked to be asked to hug people, right? These are things that I, I came into this craft wanting to do. And then I'm, I'm put in a position where I'm having to almost evolve overnight the way in which my, I comprehend the world, the way in which I tactically connect to the world. And what has been great as a salve for me, every Thursday at 5.30, I'm connected to um, thought leaders, thinkers um, that help me to recontextualize. Like when Toshi Regan talked about the sonic vibration of the body, of the Black body, I got to recontextualize that I've always had a vibration of liberation, of freedom, of, 
of ancestral wisdom inside of me, that the drum in which I beat is a drum that, that can allow for me to awaken new doors, new possibilities in my psyche of my past and psyche of my future. Um, when, we think about, when we think about capitalism and what does it mean to create a home versus what create an empire, right? That sticks with me. Am I actually creating an empire or am I creating a home? And what does it mean to actually ger generate a space of home? So, so there is this, there is this, while we're in this space called COVID-19, this pandemic and this idea, this pause, and we are trying to march towards normalism and normalism is not actually what, what is gonna save us, right? There is not going back. There's a grief of like, how do I build new and new comprehension, new understanding? And I think some of that I, I have found personally and watching the way that you've moderated. I just like publicly just wanna say right now, thank you so much for the way that you've moderated because the way that you've moderated has awakened new senses of becoming and have allowed for new senses of becoming for me to allow for me to actually withstand some of the brunt front work, front, some of the brunt work that I'm doing at the front line. Thank you, that, <laughs> that's so, thank you, I'm, I'm gonna, accept that you know as opposed to being like no I won't, <laughs> I won't accept that compliment <laughs> thank you and then and to add to that I want to say to Mia like you know as I'm downloading and processing the fact that like our entire way of doing programming was completely shifted in a matter of weeks you know mm -hmm. going into this fully digital realm I mean how does that impact legacy where does that put us in terms of redefining we were talking earlier about redefining gathering you know what what does that mean to us so yeah, throwing this out here for you all like being in this digital moment what does that mean for the legacy the future of mbt i mean we've always talked about starting like an archival project like i remember yeah. going to uh, dr tears like office that's not the MBT building and just like seeing all these photos and uh, programs and all of the stuff that like people don't have access to and we're trying to figure out like how do we share that with others um, and so having like a digital space I appreciated the time we took to pause it's like okay we're not gonna rush to put any like productions on zoom if that's not what we need to offer right now but what we can offer is our archive which like really hasn't been shared before um, and so that was like, a, I think a major consideration in how we decided to like navigate this time. It's really a, a moment to like share kind of like the legacy of 52 years. What does like 52 years of legacy building and paving new way, uh, paving new modes of like creation really do? And like, what inspires you, Nia? Like what, like I, and I'm so curious because, and the, the reason why I'm like, you know, I, I have to know more about this is because you're like processing an entire like analog way of looking at these things um, and recontextualizing it for people to have access in the palm of their hand to really just rich archival material. So, I mean, like what what is your inspiration for curating this? How are you? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, Kelsey, because I think that's a great question. I also want to just center that like, the number one question that Jonathan and I get when we're out in the world is like, thank you. Well, it's not a question. The number one comment we get is thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your morning effort. Your morning. Why can't I talk today, y'all? Um, <laughs> affirmations. Thank you so much for your morning affirmations or who does your social media? Like it speaks to my spirit and my soul. And when Nia came on board, Nia was so passionate about growing our following and also like this idea of distillation and digestion. Like there is a part of theater that is archaic and not accessible at all, right? It means you have to be able-bodied enough to get to our theater, afford a ticket, have yeah. the time, sit yeah. in that seat, pay for that ticket and then watch a show and that and you have to be one of 99 because that's that's our house right and Nia so brilliantly was like MBT is not a place it's a space 
right? And if I can help curate that space in a more accessible way to more folks, and that what is special about MBT is not our production quality as much as it's our pedagogy. And what does that look like on a digital platform? So Nia, I know this is probably not where you are for Facebook folks, but it is where you are for me, maybe that you're like that, um, is the genius behind the framework for how we reinvented ourselves on a digital platform. So now you can answer Chelsea's question, but I wanted to really set you up because you are so much of the creative energy by which people interact with MBT on a daily basis. Thank you for saying that. Um, the morning affirmations are a really wonderful model to learn more about who we are. And when we say we're your home away from home, we really mean it. We're a place that you walk into and you are immediately affirmed and uplifted and we believe in you wholeheartedly and what you are capable of. Um, and so to have just like a little reminder of that every morning and then you can come to our page and see that we have a show or we have a conversation series. But like first and foremost, we want to be like the first thing on your timeline or at least when Instagram was chronological. We want to be the first thing on your timeline saying that like you are worthy, you are enough, we love you and that hey. will just like set your day. I see. And how do you come up with this content and also the subcontent? Because I'm just kind of always just I know I know that I know I know that it is a joint effort, but sometimes you come up with this brand new and the way that you structure it, I have to say, is uh, also quite. So do you mind just sharing some of that inside wisdom? Yeah, well, one of the first things you told me is that NBT engages in the present pulse. And so like we're always trying to engage with what is happening in this moment. What do people need in this moment? And so it's really like a daily look at okay, we are grieving, we are like holding a lot, what is an affirmation that can help people work through that, um, not like numb themselves from it. We have a little group chat on Instagram where we send affirmations to each other. And like, there are some amazing accounts that we like continue to go back to. Uh, Morgan Harper, Nicole, um, Alex L, We The Urban, We're Not Strangers. Um, and a lot of our artists as well, we realize that there are so many affirmations in the scripts and the work that our artists mm -hmm. do that we can like take a line and just like make that an affirmation for the day. Uh, Jillian Walker Skinfolk has some beautiful affirmations that we were able to share. And it's like, it incentivizes people to come to the show, but it's also just like welcome to the world of what we do and what we want to share. And I have to say that like the thing that's so beautiful about our digital like platform and what Nia does so gracefully and beautifully is that one of the one of the contributions that Jonathan and I have tried to uh, add to this really incredible legacy that is Dr. Barbara Ann Tears National Black Theater is very early on in our relationship we wanted to really redefine Black theater in from a space of intersectionality and complexity which was what my mother was always striving to do and 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 black theater had evolved into a place that didn't necessarily feel like there was a place for all black artists and so what we wanted to do is dispel this idea that there was something called black theater and so what we decided to say just straight off the back is like if you are of the diaspora and it is an idea that comes out of your body it is black theater we wanted to affirm that so we started this residency program where you know folks like Oren Squire were writing sci-fi plays and they were you know plays that were set in the future plays that were set in the past there were musicals there was you know plays that were in iambic pentameter all of it was like very real very valid very complex and very black and so one of the things that I think is so genius about the way that you curate our social media, Nia, really is that is also a part of it, right? That like we don't exist without recognizing equally that our joy is as rebellious as our pain is it, it is is weighted, right? Like there's this push pull of being a human being and being a human being born into our skin. And that what we wanted our social media to be reflective of is the beauty of that complexity, whether and that that beauty was housed in both our joy and our pain. It was the recognition of being alive. Um, and so I think that like that to me is so dope 
that um, when you come to our social media, you know, you might stumble on our plays or our work or our talks, but what you're really having is a conversation with your humanity at its highest, most divine self. Very true. Okay. Yeah, it's very true. And Chelsea, I want to bring you into this because I, you have been doing so much labor for these past <laughs> four conversations. Um, so much of how we have curated our symposiums, our micro commissions are through your brilliant genius and your love of archive. Like, I think that you are the embodiment of the African proverb. If you know the beginning well, the end will not trouble you. And the way that you love archive and ancestor stories and the way you see them as a tool to craft a more brilliant future. If you could talk to us about that passion that you bring to your curatorial work here at MBT in this series, I think I think our viewers love to have a little insight there, a little download there. I mean, you know, part part of it is y'all, part of it is y'all say, oh hey, we're just wondering if you're interested in this amazing thing right here. Would you like full complete access to <laughs> this amazing thing? And so, you know, naturally, you know, I, I'm excited by these things, but also you know, I, I, I love that what you bring up Shade in the sense of what do, what do the elders, what does ancestral wisdom offer? Um, what work has been done so that we can work smarter and not harder? You know what I mean? Like what, what, what mm -hmm. foundation has been laid um, that we can harken back to? And there's something that like, sometimes I, I feel, oh, it's stressful that there's like nothing new. Like all these ideas that you think are brand new, they've been around for a really long time. And there are stories that are, that are just have been circulating in our consciousness for so long. Um, and sometimes that can be overwhelming because you want to be so innovative and you want to have thought of something that's never been thought of. But I'm starting to learn, particularly in moments of like crisis and extreme pressure, that it's very heartening to know that there are people who have experienced something similar or people who have survived something um, as terrifying, as urgent, as up close violence, you know what I mean? Um, and what had what what did they learn from that? And maybe there's something I can I can use as we journey forward because we're always moving and going and changing, like Octavia Butler writes about. Yes, yeah. You know, we're always that that that's the only constant. That's constant. And so, yeah. what can we what can we put in our toolkit that's light enough for us to carry that we can take it wherever we go and, and we can we can bloom where we're planted so that's mm -hmm. always what's in the back of my mind when you know I go to the Schomburg or I'm looking through pictures or I'm going down the rabbit hole of Pinterest or you know what I mean all of these um, all of this research it's me just trying to gather something so that I can offer uh, some I don't know I don't know what the word is like some well, you've been talking about like wanting to create a toolkit with these conversations mm -hmm. where it's like whatever we're able to like glean from Dr. Tears technology, like after after all these years, like you want to create kind of like something we can take from day to day. It's like, how are we going to continue to evolve and be better, right. to grow and to learn? And that's that's what you've been able to create with these conversations. Oh. And, I, and I also want to you're probably not on this side. Um, I want to big up Chelsea because Chelsea's a longtime member of our family and she has directed many productions, but like where we have all come together from a curatorial standpoint, just so people can give context to our our, our Oprah, we always like, oh, you had an Oprah moment, girl, and that conversation where you like, <laughs> it, like tell me more. Like, did, did your mother do it like that? Like, Chelsea is killing the conversations, but really, I want to center her as a curator. About three years ago, we started these micro commissioning events in partnership with other organizations. And Chelsea from day one was a part of the brain trust of that. And so she's co-created Mothers of the Movement. She's co-created um, our migration, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, perpetual flight. 
in perpetual flight, co-curated that, co-curated um, obviously all of our at-home series and, um, and, and programmings that had to be delayed because of COVID. Um, and so as much as she is this incredible on-air facilitator, um, instigator and incubator. She's also kind of one of the creative brains behind our programming that you've experienced or haven't and hope that you will. Um, and I just have a question. I have a question. So thinking about this episode as the download, um, what were, what are the hopes and aspirations? I mean, I can, I'll go, but I was just wondering, what were the hopes and aspirations that we all had to download in this moment? And, or to also, what do we mean by download and shut, yes? yes. I was gonna ask, do you want to do you want to give some framing to why this was the download? Yeah, I'll give some framing why this was the download. Why not? So in the first, so in the first like MBT at home, it has a little bit of legacy to it. This is a little bit of trajectory. In our first MBT at home, um, when we did uh, uh, cre um, our cre re re creative resilience, is that was it? MBT at home. Uplifting communal resilience. Yeah. Uplifting communal resilience. And it took a community in order for me to say the name of it. So, so, in, our, so in our first series of MVD at Home, um, it was, uh, there was a, the first one was Sade, myself, and Chelsea. And um, we were talking. And while we were talking, we were just understanding that there was a real need for the thing, like the things that we were expressing. And because of the way that people were responding to what, how we were um, expressing, we we're like, oh, there's, there's an opportunity here. There's an opportunity for leadership actually to show up. And then we were like, Nia has to come because Nia is a, a huge element of, of it and also helps the infrastructure, right? And also thinking about generational. What does it mean to create a generational platform for all of us to be able to sit in one space? And so we were like, what if we created a space where we once a month come together and we have a download. Now, what is a download? Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of inside scoop. You might have a little clarity by that because you probably what have searched something and then it what download it. So what is it? What a download is literally allowing for us to sit in our intuitive self because all of us are hypo gumbo ya ya intuitive beings and allowing for our vessel to transmit a message, transit transmit um, an idea, transmit a thought a thought that is coming that we hope and that we think and that we know in our body um, is a needed uh, moment for someone out there. Someone out there needs to know that there's a, there's a smile looking at them, <laughs> so I smile. Someone needs to know there's someone thinking about um, uh, them in the morning. So we talk about morning affirmation. Someone needs to know that there's a, there, is a, there is a beautiful, majestic, amazing institution led by a woman of color and they need to know Sade Lithcott. Some people need to know that a curator um, can, can work with grace and look at history and still create something innovative for the now. So we bring Chelsea. Someone needs to know that there is not just an artistic director, but there's a creative doula, right? That I can think of myself in this nuanced way. So and wanting to really, really figure out what does it mean to, again, extend the space of home, we wanted to create a series. And the series is called the download, download. Um, and this is our and this is our first one so you know with everything that's the first you know you try to get it out and so like i'm just wondering just thinking about it this being our first time at it what were people hoping what are people desiring um that people leave with when they when they when what the people bring to the table when they come to the download and what do they leave by the time they leave the download can i give a little historical note to that please so Dr. T so Dr. Tier um, firmly believed in uh, all of us being intuitive beings that were connected to spirit. And she really believed that soul, the soul vibration is the download, right? That we are in touch with wisdom, with prosperity, with abundance that came seven generations before and will continue seven generations forward. And that we all get to be vessels if we treat ourselves properly, if we connect and focus in a way that we can download that message, that spirit, that intuition that tells us which way to build okay. forward, right? So our download is that North Star. Oftentimes folks are like, I just woke up and I had this dream, right? The dream is the download. And so much of indigenous African practice 
is built into the ritual of downloading. It may not look like the computer, but it absolutely is a download. It is spirit moving you in a direction. If you think about like Harriet Tubman, how she was courageous enough, how she could find the path she was downloading. And so there was something really, there was a, there was a, there was an ancestral call, right? To center this download as a sustainable practice for building into the future. And we wanted to call it out. You know, we're in the middle of so much strategic planning for the future that are all about systems and order and operation. And yet the best of who we are, all of us, on any given day and moment comes through a download, right? To what we have to offer um, and what folks show up to give back. And I think that that is also a part of this download. It comes from a long legacy and heritage that is um, our divine, divine birthright if we own it and claim it and speak it into the world. Okay. Yes, Chelsea, go ahead. Thanks. Yes, because you know I have, because because the perfect transition for me, because I would like to share some things I've downloaded. Yes. Um, but, and one of those things is the phrase, don't come to get, come to give. Mm -hmm. um, and this idea of her asking to bring of yourself, bring your hangups, bring your insecurities, bring the things that you think are broken, bring all of that to the theater. Um, and the way that she saw theater and its function was something that really like blew my mind, really blew my mind um, this time around, <laughs> this time around. I mean, hey. it was like, so it, it really rung true to me in a way that I wasn't expecting that the theater is a way to, is a, is a way to pass down cultural art forms. It's a way to, um, create a space for healing. Um, Adrienne Marie Brown said something that I really resonated with was this commitment to self-transformation, that being the foremost place of, of where the work has to happen. You know, what are you doing with yourself in the midst of calling things out? What, are, what, what is happening with, with this dialogue internally? And that the theater as a place where this can be experimented with and worked out and eventually saying, she she said eventually we won't call it a theater at all because yeah. theater is theater in the the idea of theater in and of itself is too small. So you know, speaking with Dominique Ryder, you know that was something that they mentioned. It's like yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in fifty years, I don't want to I don't want to see any institutions. I don't want to see any yeah. you know brick and mortar establishment. Uh, you know I mean, um, so th th that's just one of the things that that downloaded. I, yeah. I'll share, I'll share space though, because I can go on. <laughs> yeah, did you have any downloads during this series? Oh yeah, I mean, one of like the <laughs> joys of being able to like run the technical part of it is I just get to like press stream and then I'm just receiving for an hour and a half every Thursday. It's so beautiful. Um, one thing that is like really sticking with me is um, the sense of like moving away from an urgent pace I have a tendency to work in a state of emergency at all times because I do want to be like present, but oftentimes I'm like trying to jump it. Um, and so like learning to really like, it doesn't mean I have to go slow, but it just means I need to move at the pace of the download, the pace at which I was like meant to receive things, the I pace I was meant to give and to share, that is the speed at which I need to be working and it will shift and it will change. But as long as I'm like tapping into that download, I like always do this, this signal because I know there's like a light and is coming through, and when it arrives, I will know. Hey, I like that. I like, I'm gonna start doing that. And the download comes and I what? know which way to go. I, love it. <laughs> I know when Jonathan's getting a download, cause he'd be rocking. He'd be like, then, like oftentimes when he's about to do his breath, he starts very like straight. And then all of a sudden this happens. I'm like, ooh, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> I mean, I be try. I be. I don't even. I know. Okay, so the downloads for me have been, and what I was hoping. So what I was hoping that would happen during this moment was a, was is exactly what is happening. Um, but it is a moment for us to kind of like take away title and bring in our human presence. 
take away the burden and to come in and just be. And knowing that our knowledge of beingness allows for us to A, steward this institution that the four of us do so beautifully and the ways in which we do it, um, and that we are enough in that, <laughs> and that is our freedom. And that we also get to like think about how are we conduits to support um, the hug that our community needs? Um, and how does our language get to be that hug? How does our, and like really thinking about, and I've been really, really wrestling with this. It's just like, it's just like, like thinking about the download has also been a, like, what does intimacy look like now? What does intimacy look like in this digital frame? And I, and like Shadi and like Shadi and I have been riffing about it, talking about it. Sometimes I talk openly and publicly about it, but like intimacy is this energy now. It's always been, but now for me, it's like, it's all this energy, this energizing bunny that I'm trying to figure out how do I maneuver myself in, inside and out of? Because right now we could be intimate. We could be very intimate. Right now there could be, there could be the sweetest, the sweetest moments that we possibly can imagine. There could be the softest moments that we possibly can ever imagine. And it's the invitation. And maybe that's the download. Um, and so, and so like, there's just, there's just these, these moments that I'm just like really, really, really interested and fascinated by. Um, and I was just, and it just made me, it made me really excited to think that people that I get to laugh, vision, and joy, and, and bring joy to like my community with from a back end place, I get to now do it in a forward facing way that then it welcomes other people into the kind of majestic, um beautiful humans that i get to like be connected to on a day-to-day -day basis and the, and a fraction of it the thing about intimacy um why i find that to be profound is because it's, intimacy has to transcend right because the thing that is the meditation on intimacy is not intimacy itself it's how do you create it in this touchless yes. world that we live yes. in, right? Yes. These are boxes that we exist in that don't give us time to digest, that don't give us separation of church and state and home and heart. It's all one and we are expected to show up. To arrive. To <laughs> arrive, to be ready for something that is devoid of our humanity. This yes. is a dimensional way of communicating yes. where you can't embrace someone, where you can't cry, where you can't grieve, where you're watching funerals on TV. Yes. Yes. This is a heist. Yeah. We are being robbed of the tactile way in which we connect. Which, and we which, were asked, which, said overnight that that is okay, that yeah. I can pivot into a box which is inhumane, right? And so a part of this download is about how do we create humane structures within technology? That's why the morning affirmation is so uh, vibrant and, and, and resonant with people because they are on a contraption that controls their life. And if not for 30 seconds, two seconds, two minutes, they matter. They are seen, they feel safe, they feel celebrated, and they feel sacred. And how do you do that with two dimensions? And so I think the thing about intimacy, why it's such a powerful meditation right now, is that we're having these conversations in very analytic, binary, like contraptions that were not built for us to be human. They were built for us to be zombies and addicts, right? You, yeah. Our, totally. And so that's the part for me that I think is so brilliant about this series is that it is dripping with humanity. It is dripping with the concerns of our soul. And that translates somehow uh, through the computer where you type forms. <laughs> I forget that there's like, there's a world underneath like my torso that everyone's uh, <laughs> I ask my friends to stand and I'm like, you have legs. Like I have not seen those legs in four months. Oh. Great, like you look great right now. No, um, that's, no, that's, and that's powerful mm -hmm. to think about, but keep on going, keep on oh, going, no. please, please. Like remember, 
Like I, yes, yes, you are full. You are a full human. Yes, I'm full human. I've been sitting for so long. To stand feels so good. Wow. And so, like, I am so excited for future Zoom conversations in which we can put the camera, like, maybe instead of two feet away from us, ten feet away from us, and we'll have yeah. to. Put it That's what we do in the theater. But you'll see my full body. You can read yeah. the bottom of my shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, and, and then, and then you can, and then also, but it's just like what's what's kind of profound about this about the idea about what you're asking us to inviting us to have a conversation with is that right now you're having a conversation, a intimate conversation with just half of me, not even my wholeness. You're not even, you're not, and I am not being able to activate my wholeness inside the conversation, right? I have to intentionally figure out, because I try to figure out, oh, how does this look, right? Not how does the rest of my body look? I am wearing shorts, I, I do have full clothes on, but like how does the rest of my body look inside of this. I'm not necessarily concerning myself with that. I'm concerning myself with what does it look like in this frame, right? And inside that frame, it's like there's a, there, there's a, a, a lethargic uh, training that's happening in the body. And like that, that right there is just like, so then what happens? Like, so then it does feel, and now I'm starting to have a deeper understanding of why it does feel strange when I meet someone in real life, in real time, back again in connectivity, and we're having to actually absorb the full, the full human. It's not just because of the psychic distance of the screen. It's because I'm also having to acknowledge a whole, a wholeness around someone that I never, that I didn't have to do for such a long period of time. And this idea, what you brought up, Shade, of like being utilitarian, like these boxes, this program, although has been the driving factor of helping us to connect immediately, silences us in so many different ways. The fact that Shade and Nia, you have to sometimes mute yourself silencing you from connecting to have the call and response because the sonic vibration sometimes will interrupt the very nature of us being able to talk to one another, right? And, and the nature of that, and this is the thing that like, why mom would like decrud, right? Is that this whole construct was built on the, on the principles of supremacy, right? There's a beginning time, there's an end time. This is the box that you fit in. And not only is this box yours and only yours, I cannot bleed into Chelsea's yep. box. I cannot yep. bleed into the box below. I have to stay within this. And because I am on your computer, your television, your phone, all your devices, you feel entitled. You yeah. feel entitled to my home. You feel entitled to my time. You feel entitled that I don't need, um, a uh, 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 transition time from one meeting to the next. It's all based on like principles of entitlement and supremacy. Yeah. And we are self-selecting ourselves in because we think our survival depends on that for connection, creativity, and, and, and productivity. And yeah. all of a sudden we start shaping our thoughts to be that of a cog as opposed to that of a full person. And yeah don't realize in the same way you have to click I accept cookies on every website that what we're checking when we decide to check in in this way is that we are we are sacrificing or we are um, a, a, a surrendering to literally this heist of our space and our time and our pacing and so as much as we can call that out as we choose to connect. And that's why I love black folks like Derek McFadden in residency who we're working with now on some development stuff. His birthday was over Zoom. Like many of our birthdays, our quarantine birthdays were, but he was like, my mama came up with a recipe and we, <laughs> you know, like how do we, find ways that de that defy, that question the frame for mm -hmm. connection. And I think that that's the, that's the beauty of MBT is that we're saying like, we'll play this game called theater, but we'll do it in a subversive way that really taps into what we were born to truly be, not who you expect us to be. I think Zoom got upset with how we were critiquing the system because as I am looking, sorry, it's social media, our live stream is a little broken right now. Um, so if folks can hear us, know that like we will be uploading this to YouTube and you'll be able to like watch oh, the full okay. But I, I, noticed, I noticed that too. Um, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay, that happened. <laughs> and, and, um, and Chelsea, Chelsea, did you want to talk about 
the talk about it because I have another question. Oh, I'm okay. Gonna you, I'm going to be you for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I just wanted to throw in um, something that has been, I've been thinking a lot about with our discussions around pleasure activism and some mm -hmm. of the things that have come up around resistance or blockages, um, guilt or shame around rest, around following pleasure, around defining what is even pleasure, what does it feel like, what does it look like to, to me? Um, and so that is something that I've been thinking a lot about in, a, in, in this new, if not new, but this, this kind of buzzwordy moment that the phrase trauma informed is having. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Even though trauma is something that humans have been causing and experiencing and carrying for a very long time. Um, but something that I have a lot of questions around and I'm trying to figure out our place as artists and following Dr. Tears thinking around this has been very helpful, but what do we do PQ, post quarantine, to facilitate making being around other human beings easier? To how do we create a place, a feeling of safety? Because we have been Ashe. isolated and then yes. there's so much divisiveness and it's yes. compounded with our constant digital access that is yes. not mitigated by anything, you know? So we're constantly downloading so much information mm -hmm. and so, so much violent imagery and you know what I mean? Um, I'm wondering PQ, you know, what is the artist's role in healing that um, and facilitating? You know, so, you know, yeah, so, that's, so that's what I'm throwing out. Hmm? Well, no, and, and like we were having similar downloads because my question was, what is gathering <laughs> like after quarantine? Mm -hmm. What is what is gathering like? And I think that's, I think those are both two very real things that we have to, that like, it's not about recovery. It's not about, it's not about, it's not about putting on another show. It's really about this thing called gathering. What is gathering like post quarantine? And how do you restore the humanity post quarantine? And, and also acknowledge that there are people who have deep concerns and there will and be I, people yeah. who will continue to, yeah. And I love that you, you use the phrase restore humanity because there's been so many like inhumane proposals <laughs> uh, of how we're, we as, as a nation are, are supposed to respond to this pandemic, like rushed reopenings and, you know, everybody being on the bandwagon of, okay, oh, the economy versus public health, you know, yes. this false, this false um, dichotomy, but it's like, how do we get back to a place where the lives of everyone, our neighbors, everyone who is here and around us, I, where there's respect and dignity, you know what I mean, for those lives. Because what we've seen or what I've been witnessing and what I've been using this conversation series to process, quite frankly, uh, is realizing the scale uh, of disregard for my life mm -hmm. and, and the life of everyone around me. I mean, it's really horrifying when you start to put together the true scale of the danger, you know what I mean, and threat that is ever present and ever growing. Um, so, that, you know, the, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a tool too. And we have to be conscious of not only where we're investing our time, but where we're divesting our time, right? Because mm -hmm. that narrative, that fear, that danger around our lives, is it more real today than it was when they were lynching folks from trees, right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps there was a perception that it was more safe, but maybe it's just the same. And maybe our exposure mm -hmm. to it is different, right? And maybe that fear, that real visceral feel is in service to something that is not in your highest well-being because mm -hmm. we've invested in watching the news and reading the newspapers. And so I would say that like that's the genius I think of National Black Theater is when folks mm -hmm. want to talk about structural racism that does exist and that when they want to talk about like how dangerous it is to walk down the street in black skin, especially like in the presence of police which it can be, and, and the cries to dismantle that, which is important. I'm also like, but what are you pouring yourself into? What are we building instead? And this idea of the complexity 
of humanity is so crucial in this moment because on one hand, we are looking, we're talking to scientists and doctors to find out airflow so that we can gather and yet the streets are being poured through with protesters screaming for our lives. No one in the, in the height of the pandemic felt the need to stay home in light of what was happening on our screens, right? So like, I don't know if people, but because it's compartmentalized and it is asked to be held in different spaces, we don't connect that humanity that people actually aren't scared to gather. We see that as much as we hear the rhetoric around, like it's not safe to be in closed spaces and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not trying to undermine the science. The science is the science and we should all be safe and we should all practice social distance, hygiene and wear our masks. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, what is the psychological warfare that is happening? Mm -hmm. In more spaces than just the obvious, the psychological warfare of yeah. watching these murders, the psychological warfare of not feeling safe in your office or with your neighbor and yet we have, we have gathered in the hundreds of thousands across the globe to demand um, uh, uh, racial justice and equity. And so I just, I'm curious what is being built. And if we're not building it ourselves, what story are we allowing ourselves to be written into? And where are we allowing ourselves to be shepherded to? Because this is critical time. This. Mm paradigm shift that is COVID-19, which is like uh, the reckoning that is happening around the world is crucial. And as, as light, light beings in this time of paradigm shift, what are we choosing to invest in and build? That's like really my question, because if we're not clear about that, we're going to be shepherded into a space that mm. tracks us, that tags us, that that mm. values us based on our culture to bacteria and yeah. all of the rest. And it is really a shepherding that's happening. So I just, I want us to have more complex conversations around what it is to be human and, and gather and intimate and all of the things that we've been talking about because not everything passes the scratch test. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it just, yeah. it doesn't. Well, I, and I and I just want to uplift the idea of sitting in one's discomfort, right? And like, instead of going mm -hmm. directly into action sometimes, um, why when Nia, you talked about how we just paused for a moment as an institution um, and really tried to assess what's going on, um, yeah. taking the moment to pause and be uncomfortable in that pause. Because I think on some level it was uncomfortable because we were like, what are we going to do? We got to do yeah, something. But also we're just like, but we got to be still. There's a lot of noise right now. Mm -hmm. And what I want to create is sound. What I want to create, I want to be able, I want to be able to think about how am I in, in, con in being conscious about my polyphony, my cacophony, my discord, and my harmony. I want to know that I'm actually, how am I uh, participating? And I think that's a little bit around the secret sauce of MBT's wisdom, right? I think ever when I think about even Dr. Tier's choice to move from downtown to uptown, is this like a, a vantage point of saying, where are my eyes? Where do I need to land? Where do my roots need to go? That is not because I don't feel it here. This is no. This is this is a potentially noise right here. I need to actually ground myself in myself. So so like there 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 is there is, there is this kind of really beautiful um, a wonder that I have when when you talk about when you talk about this moment, um, Shade. Of, of me really just asking, like, if we are not pausing to live in, this, in, the, in the knowingness of not knowing, which is uncomfortable, I think, for us as humans, are we just reconstructing paradigms that actually live by the systems that we want to oppress? Like, it, it, it is, it is mind-boggling to me the way that we have disregarded um, the death and murder of many Black women, trans, and cis, and non-binary, but women identify bodies. And it's mind boggling to me when, 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 it, when, when it was a black male body, we, we, we were at the, we were in the, and it was a very unique time, right? And probably what I'm saying might be a little problematic. However, I do think that it's quite interesting. And I think it's something to examine when we think about this paradigm shift and how are we shifting towards a space of holistic healing and holistic care 
um, and feeling whole as a society where we have somewhat left the blinders on um, in order to get to what destination? Yeah, and that's, you know, that that circles back to that piece about self-transformation for me of like, you know, we have people have been giving their their bodies in service mm -hmm. to educating and illuminating things for others. And the question that I have is like, is everybody doing their work though? Is everybody really interrogating their own bias and having these private personal uncertain uncomfortable conversations with themselves in mm. silence you know what I mean to really come to a place of this is what this is what I believe this is this is where I am yeah. you know so I can internalize this focus as much as I externalize it so um just wanted to toss that in there I think it goes back to what Jonathan said earlier about kind of our steadfast belief that um things don't change just because you call them out. They really, yeah. transformation happens when you invite people in, when you call people in. And yeah. I think that that is the part, right? That a part of NBT's silence has been, we don't wanna be a part of call out culture. We've seen how that has operated and we don't know if real change comes about that way, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't wanna be performative about how we spend our energy and yet, you know, this idea of, of really inviting folks in to examine themselves as the front line to all of the things they want to change in the world, right? And like, you know, there's so much anti-Blackness that's happening. Everyone's buzzword right now is anti-racism, but like Black folks, traffic in anti-blackness all the time. One of the things that I love is if you ever get an opportunity to watch um, uh, Ngozi have a conversation, especially there was this one conversation Ngozi was having with Jonathan. And, you know, she, to me, is obviously a queen. And one of the things that she's always a queen of is accountability. She's just like, <laughs> you gotta call folks out, but like, where does that exist in you, right? Mm -hmm. And that, extra level and layer of accountability to your point, Chelsea, that we yeah. have to take with ourselves. Where are we trafficking in the places, right? My mom says, if you, you can't be it, if you can't see it. And if you see it, that must mean you be it, right? So like, if you're mm. seeing like despair, grief, you know, you're seeing a, 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 a white fragility, supremacy, entitlement, patriarchy, misogyny, mm -hmm. like the first place to start in the dismantling is within yourself, 100%. Right. And it was like, while all mm -hmm. this kind of performative noise was going on in the world around, like you were saying, mini theaters, like action steps and all this kind of stuff, we were like, wait, like, can we actually sign that petition? Like, cause are we accountable for all of our actions? Has MBT ever participated in anti-black activity? And we looked at ourselves and we were like, oh yeah, maybe there, or maybe that, or maybe that decision, or maybe that time when that person disagreed with me and I couldn't hear them, maybe that's what they were saying. Because mm -hmm. the whole idea of this experiment of America, of MBT, is to move towards a more perfect union, right? And a more perfect union starts with the wholeness and the holistic nature of ourselves. So I'm always moving towards a more perfect union with myself and my God and my download in order to be able to be a clearer vessel for the work to come through. And if I can set that table for myself first, right? My pleasure, my pain, my ugliness, my, my, my entitlement, my fragility, all of the things that perturbate me in the world, if I can set the most pristine, beautiful table for all of me to come forward, then mm -hmm. I can start being able to do that in the world for others and invite them in to how I celebrate me and and what I am only willing to have show up at my table because I understand and I am in the service of the wholeness and the healing of that full person. I love it. Yes. Love it. <laughs> I mean, it just speaks to, it speaks to so many, um, Oh, there's there's so many things I want to tag into that, but like, you know, this this 
Can I just say I love the fact that you have a candle in the background. You've had it every single conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. Um, oh, yeah. You have a candle on behind in the background every single. Okay. Every, I'm just like she holding space. Yeah. She is. She yeah. is. She's running out all the <laughs> unnecessary things. I mean, we're gonna talk about download. This is part of the download. You gotta have a candle. I got a candle. I got. I got. I got five going right now. All right. To hold space, you gotta hold the space. But I just wanted to uplift that before. Thank you. I, 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 it's yes. there. Yes. It's definitely there. And I mean, I, I think what something that really has I've downloaded from from these conversations is the complexity of blackness. Um, mm. I really love Shade, you bringing up the anti blackness that you can see in so many various corners of our the whole diasporic community. Like when we are anti African, when we are anti American, mm. when we are anti black, there are so many ways. Um, in which we reveal our own relationship to white supremacy and colonial powers. And so I, one thing that I, I am hoping that this conversation series showed is that th your mess and your magic, I, I believe that was Lee Edward Colston II said this, you know, your mess and your magic are welcome in any space that you, that you go into and to create a, a home rather than an empire is some, it's just such a really, such a delightful idea to me because I can think about what I would want to make a home. You know what I mean? How, mm -hmm. how home, what, what that means, what that, what that looks like, how I could create that. An empire, you know, we, we have historical examples of that and it's like, it's pretty heinous what, what's required to, to, to do that, you know? Um, so this whole series has really made me reconceive what what leadership, what what does it mean to be entrepreneurial? What does it mean to to be radical? You know, in the way that Angela Davis mentions taking things out by the root. You know, what does it mean to to really do that? So, oh, this series has been incredibly rich. I just want 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 to do a slight time check though. Um, we've got what like six five six minutes left. Um, if there was anything that that is super super pressing that we wanted to let people folks know about, um, just wanted to make space for that to for those things. Yeah, to be if said. you want to, I don't know if you have something that you've been wanting you've been wanting to express, but just wanted to make space for that as well. I, and thank you, Chelsea. Yes, <laughs> I like really agree with Shade. It's like we have been gathering, we have been organizing. Um, mm -hmm. One of my collaborators, Talia, says that like theater is community organizing. And so to have those things be separate is actually false and the work that we're doing out on the streets and in our homes like that is that is part of our work as like storytellers visionaries builders architects all of those things and I, I really want to like carry that and like continue to download that. Um, you know, I really, I really love that you've literally created a dance that I was <laughs> utilizing for a while now. Yes. Oh, yes, today. No, I, I, I wanted to, um, I wanted just to thank the thousands of people who have tuned in every Thursday at 5.30 to see what we're cooking. Um, some of you might have joined us because you knew the faces and the names of the brilliant folks we were gathering. Some of you may have joined because you love MT MBT and some of you have may joined because someone just told you you should check it out. And like every single click and every single view um, means the world to us because what we do really is steeped in you and the you of all of you tuning in validates that what we have to offer um, matters. And so I wanna thank all, everyone for tuning in. Uh, w you know, we're just going to figure out what our next series will be as we conclude um, Founders Month. I also just really wanna say that, you know, as we think about um, the movement for our lives, one of the things that I've been really passionate about uplifting, and I guess I kind of talked about it and everybody on the kind of screen has talked about it is that black lives matter and black spaces matter. And MBT is a black space that has been crafted um, in our likeness for our total self to be come forward. And so one of the things that I think came out of Founders Month that is exciting to me, and this is my pitch, is our, our um, Vision Forward Fund. So it's just an invitation 
if you feel so moved to make a contribution to NVT, um, it continues the work that we've been doing for more than a half a century that we're committed to doing for at least a half century or more and more. Um, and I think that, you know, one of the most brilliant parts of our pedagogy as we have stewarded it in this body has been the way um, our fearless co-leader, Jonathan McCory, signs us out with a unifying breath. And so I would say in the time that we have left in your living rooms where you have welcomed us in or wherever Ooh. you are, we would yes. like to welcome you in to the way we complete. Jonathan. So um, so I've been asked to do a unifying breath, y'all. So we're about to do it all together. And just to uplift and um, really give great credence to what Shade was saying is that this is uh, MBT, um, as Dr. Tier would say, welcome to your home away from home. So we consider everybody who has come through this series an extension of our family. And there's a Trinity challenge we give to everyone who's a part of our family. And hopefully you'll do one, two, or all three of them, but it's just a simple opportunity to engage with us. Um, one is just by, if you enjoyed this, share it. Quick, easy, share it, let people know, give, make, make people, help people come into the tent so they can get to know what the family's up to. Sign up on our mailing list, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Get to know what the family's doing. By doing that, you're helping to deepen the process. And then lastly, and not and, and equally as important, is making a contribution to what Shade just said. Our Vision Forward Fund is alive, active, and is a vital aspect to the amplification of a journey that we are about to take us on as an institution, but our community on as we move forward and, and begin to blaze um, a path founded on the foundation and based on the foundation of Dr. Barbara Antier. So without further ado, the unifying breath. So if everyone put their two feet on the ground, connecting yourself or however you can to Mother Earth, allowing the energy, the warmth of Mother Earth, imagining you could touch the core of this planet, allowing the energy from Mother Earth to travel up through your legs and allow the energy from the crown, the royal, the abundant you to travel through the crown of your head and land into the center of your system. We're just gonna take a breath together. I'm gonna give you a little bit around the technology that we have cultivated together so that we are all on the same page. Breath is a very important thing. Breath is the thing that allowed for this instrument, this vessel, this gift, this machine to operate. Breath is the thing that woke you up this morning. So with that, we're gonna take a unifying breath, knowing that the space and time which we're to occupy will never happen again. This sacred algorithm that happened during this download will never happen again. So with that, we're gonna affirm it with a unifying breath. And in a time and a space where breath and the idea of connecting to your breath is so vital and important, such a sacred gift of affirmation of work that it can be done and continue to be done, we will honor this moment and honor the gift of knowing that when we exhale and when we inhale first and exhale second, we are awakening possibilities that have never been seen on this planet before. So we breathe in a mass and we breathe in love, possibility, joy, affirmation, affirmation, radical, radical, radical grace and liberation to bake and root itself into the center of our system. And then when we exhale, we actually imagine exhales as a gift so that it wraps around everyone we are connected to, everyone that we love so dearly in our heart, everyone who we intimately want to be connected to so that we could walk in this planet, through this planet as lighter, brighter, abundant human beings able to do the work we were called on this planet to do. So the count of three, inhale in, exhale out, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us for Founders Month. On the count of three, one, two, three, inhale, then exhale. 